In this video, I'm going to show you how I have my new Hueyon HS610 2019 tablet set up for Affinity Photo. I've been using the tablet for a couple of weeks and I'm finding it indispensable. I now use it for all of my Affinity Photo editing and could never go back to using a mouse. If you're in the market for a really good and excellent value graphics tablet, then check out the Amazon links below. Using the links in the description really does help out the channel. And as always, remember to like and subscribe. Here we are at the Hueyon driver download page. I will leave a link to this page in the YouTube video description. Here we are, HS610. Don't worry about this little section here, the drivers will be displayed here. All we have to do now is select the correct driver. Here we have Mac and Windows, I'm on Windows, so I chose this beta driver here, the 14.8.33.632 underscore beta. Just hit the download here, the zip will download and you will have to go into your download directory, unzip the file and run it just like you would any other program that you've downloaded as a zip. I do recommend that you run the driver before you install your graphics tablet and then restart your PC. That's what I did and everything went perfectly smoothly. Once you have your driver installed, you should see this little icon here in your taskbar. This is the driver control panel and it's obviously a good idea to have your tablet plugged in before you invoke this. Okay, let's just click on the icon to bring up the control panel and look at my settings for Affinity Photo. The first thing I did was to go down and click on this button here, Administrator Privileges, just in case it had limited functionality without clicking it. I really don't know if it made a difference, it just restarted the driver. OK, on to the setup. I think we'll start by looking at the work area. By default, the drawing area is mapped to your screen ratio ratio of your monitor display which is probably a good default you can switch it to full area here and switch it back to screen ratio here which is what I have mine set to some people may prefer to use a smaller area which you can set by dragging the corners of the box here and you can also just drag the box and have the work area at any size and position that you feel comfortable with some people prefer a much smaller work area so that they don't have to move their whole arm, they can just move the pointer using their wrist. I select screen ratio which maps to my monitor resolution so that I've got maximum accuracy when I'm editing. Next let's take a look at digital pen. Here we have the page with the digital pen properties and I think we'll start with the three checkboxes at the bottom here. First one, enable Windows Ink. Now obviously this is just for Windows users and I turn it off. I really don't like Windows Ink, it has some odd side effects. So I just turn Windows Ink off and forget about it. I think some programs such as Lightroom need it on for pressure sensitivity but luckily Affinity Photo doesn't. Mouse mode switches the pen input from absolute to relative. It makes the tablet act more like a mouse so that as you drag your pen across the tablet the pointer will move. But it doesn't move the pointer while you're hovering. I leave this one off. Next we have game mode. This just turns off pressure sensitivity and apparently increases the performance of the tablet. But as I like to have the option of using pressure sensitivity now and again I just again leave it off. OK, that's the basic tablet setting sorted, so let's take a look at the pen pressure sensitivity. The pressure sensitivity adjustment controls the pen's reaction to how hard you press. Now, I don't like mine to be too sensitive, so I've got it set at 2. Which just means I have to press a little bit harder than the default to increase the thickness or opacity of my brushes. If I decrease the sensitivity and set it to minus 4, then it has the effect of shortening the natural attack and decay of your strokes. It makes them wider, quicker and more abrupt. 
And if we set the sensitivity all the way up to four, then you have to press much harder to get maximum width or opacity. After a little bit of playing around, I found that setting it to two felt most natural for me. Just use this little box to play with your strokes until you feel it's right for you. Clear the box with this icon and then carry on playing with it. It's a really nice system. I'm really happy with the tablet so far. It works extremely well. That's the sensitivity and the pressure test areas looked at. So next, let's look at the buttons. The pen has two buttons on the side, here and here. You can set them to do a multitude of operations. At the moment, I have the bottom button set as my right mouse button and the top button as Control Z, which is undo. Now these buttons, along with all the other buttons on the tablet, can be set on a program by program basis. Hit the little cog here and then under general settings, you can set how the buttons behave for all of your applications. To add an application, just click here. Once you click the Add App item, this menu will appear. You can browse for your XC here. That will allow you to select an executable to add to the list, or you can browse through the list here to add an already detected item. As you can see, I have Affinity Photo, Capture One and Lightroom in the list at the moment. I have set up the tablet for Capture One and a little bit for Lightroom, but for the purposes of this video, we're going to look at the setup for Affinity Photo. So that's how you can select an application which you would like to assign the pen buttons for. At the moment, for my general use with all apps, I just have right button and undo. Okay, let's look at assigning the functions or operations to the buttons on your pen. This also works for the tablet buttons and the soft keys. First, we just click on the associated box, which brings up this window. Here you can set a custom name for the operation, if you like. You can choose whether to assign keys, and the keys can have combinations, so you can assign Control or Shift or Alt or Win, the Windows key. And using this box, you can combine the Control keys with a typed key. Here I have Control and Z assigned, which is Undo. Here you can assign mouse operations. You can also assign switch functions, which will allow you to switch screen or switch brush. I haven't bothered with these yet. And also, you can run a program. It's really flexible and really, really easy to set up. Let's take a look at our bottom button, which I've assigned to the right mouse button. I've named it right click, and I've got the mouse button checked and right mouse button. So the bottom button of my pen simulates the right button of my mouse. Okay, so that's how I have my pen buttons configured. It's really easy to do, so next let's look at the tablet keys. The press keys. Here you can set up all of the 16 soft keys which are accessed by pressing them on the tablet with your pen. Or you can set up any of the 12 function keys which you press with your fingers. You can also set up the touch wheel, which is really handy. I absolutely love this touch wheel. And you can set up the functionality of the center button, which is used to switch between modes on the touch wheel. Okay then, let's start with the keys. Now, at the moment, I have all the keys, apart from the pen buttons, undefined under Windows, as for all programs, as, as I only use my tablet for graphics editing. Mainly, Affinity Photo. So I'll just select the cog, click this drop down, and then I'll select Affinity Photo. Here's where we added the app earlier. So select Photo and click Edit. And as you can see, the assigned operations have changed. Let's have a run through the buttons and see how I've assigned them all for Affinity Photo. Starting with the first button, the top left, I have it set to Control plus zero, which will center the screen. It will center the image on the screen in Affinity Photo. It will also scale the image to fit the screen. I can instantly get back from a zoom. I have the second button assigned to Control plus one, which will zoom the image 100%. For instant pixel peeping, I've set button three to shrink brush and button four 
to Grow Brush. I've set button 5 to space for panning so that I can use my pen to pan. This allows me to use this button plus the bottom button on my pen to change brush size and also any other operation requiring the Alt key. And this button is set to Control Z for undo and this one to Control Y for redo. Here we have the touch ring which we swiped to perform operations. And this center button allows you to switch operations for swiping. And if you press the button it briefly shows you the current operation or the current set of operations that you have chosen as it switches between the sets of operations. This can be set globally or for individual applications. So you can have three different sets of swipe functions for each application. I've got mine all set to the same values at the moment as I currently only use it for zooming in and out of the screen with Affinity Photo. Okay, let's take a closer look at the setting up the functions. At the moment I don't have these set, as I said. I've just left them on the defaults because I just don't use them. Though I can see myself in the future using these to do things like launching applications. Okay, if we go to our first button, which is Control-0 Center Screen, and click on the description box. I've called it Center Screen, I've got keyboard combination keys on and Control selected, and I've typed 0 into the box. If I clear the string here, and then select the box again, and press 0, it's now Control-0. We'll OK this. This one is Control-1 for 100%. Let's take a look at the settings. Control and 1. Next to the shrink and grow keys. So I'll select the shrink key. Take a look. As you can shrink the brush with the left square brackets in Affinity Photo, I've typed left square bracket in the box. And the grow brush is right square bracket in the box. Then spacebar is, take a look, space. And Alt is Alt. And Control Z and Control Y, etc. Now to the touch wheel. With the touch wheel, I have all three modes set to the same thing. I have mouse wheel forward and mouse wheel backwards on first, second and third mode. Let's take a quick look. If I click on the wheel forward, you can see I have mouse button selected and wheel forward. And that allows me to zoom in using the touch wheel with Affinity Photo. And I have the right rotate on the touch ring set to mouse wheel backwards, which allows me to zoom back out again. Excellent. And that is how I have the HS610 tablet set up for Affinity Photo. I suppose the next thing to do is take a look at using the tablet in Affinity Photo itself. Just a quick note. You can enable or disable all of the key sets, the press keys, which you press with your fingers, or the soft keys, which you select with your pen, or you can disable or enable the touch ring also. Very handy. Okay, before we start, to use the touch ring to zoom the way I have mine set up, we need to go into Edit and Preferences, choose Tools, and make sure that Use Mouse Wheel to Zoom is checked. This just allows you to use your mouse wheel to zoom in and out without having to hold down control. Now we're ready, let's run through using the tablet. Let's start with the touch ring which I use for zooming in and out. I'll just place the mouse here. Then swiping clockwise and anti-clockwise on the zoom ring, I can zoom in and out. It's nice and responsive and works extremely well. It's so good that I use this every single time I edit with Affinity Photo. If I press button 1 on the tablet, the top left button, it fits to screen, centering and fitting the image to the screen instantly. If I press key 2 on the tablet, it zooms to 100% or 1 to 1 for fine work. Now let's switch over to the paintbrush to have a look at brush sizing. Now I'll press key 6 on the tablet, which I've mapped to the Alt key, plus the bottom button on the pen, which I've mapped to the right mouse button. And now by moving the pen, I can change the size of the brush. It's absolutely brilliant. Here we go, swipe left and right for bigger and smaller and bigger and smaller. And obviously up and down will change the hardness. And if I press the keys three and four on the tablet, I can make incremental changes to the brush size like so. 
Great for quick size changes on the go while you're painting. And if I press key 5 on the tablet, which I've assigned to space, I can pan the image. I can drag around the image like so, it's really easy. Using these keys on the tablet have become really handy, I don't have to reach up to the keyboard. Tablet key 1 to fit screen, and if I want to do some painting, let's grab a colour, colour, and set the opacity to 100. I'm using the tablet right now to control everything in Affinity Photo, you get used to it after a few days, it's great. Let's select our pixel layer, we're on our HSL at the moment, and let's do some painting. I can quickly and easily paint a masterpiece, there we go, fantastic. And then if I want to undo these little legs, I just press key 7 on my tablet. Or key 8 to redo. It's really quick. After a few days of practicing with your tablet, it becomes second nature and it becomes a really fast way to edit. You won't go back. Let's take a look at the sensitivity. If you want to use the pressure sensitivity, then we can toggle this icon here, which enables pressure sensitivity for brush size. And now, as you can see, the harder we press, the wider the brush. I'll just widen the brush with the tablet keys. And I can press softly for a thin line, and then make it wider by pressing harder. Really nice. It works extremely well. It takes a while to get used to, but once you do, it becomes natural. I really do like it, it's especially nice when you're making quick strokes, they look so natural. Ok, that's pressure controlling size, if you want pressure to control opacity, if you want the brush to be less transparent the harder you press, then there are a couple of extra steps. First you have to select more here, select the dynamics tab here, make sure flow jitter is at 100 like so. Then in the drop down next to the flow jitter select pressure. Then just hit close and you should have pressure sensitivity controlling opacity. And here we go, if I press nice and softly I make nice light strokes just slightly lightening the background and applying more pressure makes it more opaque. And I can do nice strokes varying the opacity as I make the strokes. It's lovely. Now even though this is really nice, I tend to leave it off. I don't use the pressure sensitivity very often. As usually, I'm trying to fill an area or change the colour of an area by a certain amount so I don't want it to vary. So I usually go into the dynamics and set the flow jitter to none. I tend not to use pressure for size or opacity, I would rather, or most of the time, I use a low opacity and use multiple sweeps of the brush. I find that just going in and setting the opacity like so, gives, and then just using multiple brush strokes gives me a more uniform look, more predictable results. Ok, let's take a look at the tilt function, it's really cool, and works very well. If I go into more and select dynamics, Set the size jitter to 100 and set the drop down to tilt. OK, now I can use tilt. If I use my pen in a vertical position like so, I'm getting nice thin lines, but if I tilt my pen to the side, I get nice fat lines. It's really quite nice. So I can tilt the pen to make nice wide flat areas and then I can straighten the pen out to make it thin, lovely. It's really cool, you could tilt the pen just to fill in large areas whilst at the same time quickly just make the pen vertical to carry on painting as normal. Cool! And that is how I'm using my new Huion HS610 tablet with Affinity Photo.